This is Saxon Advanced Math Lesson 73, Regular Polygons. First thing we're going to do is define what a regular polygon is. A regular polygon is all of the sides of the polygon are the same length. That also means all the central angles are the same. When we do that, we have a unique situation occur so that you can actually inscribe it in a circle. And I've drawn just a triangle and a, a square, but it, the, the, these are regular. But if we drew it with any number of sides, it would still work out. I've got a, a pentagram down here uh, that you, you can see has the, the five sides in it. They do inscribe nicely in a circle. The next thing is the distance from the center to the outside on any of these axis points are going to be a radius. However, the distance from the center to the edge, okay, making a right angle, is called the apothem. And we're going to use that apothem quite heavily through the next uh, few lessons, uh, getting into some geometry here. Uh, they have an example here, and they said uh, 73.1, find the area and the perimeter of a regular pentagon that is inscribed in a circle whose radius is six units. Now, I went ahead and drew the pentagram, uh, pentagon here, and uh, you can see that it has a, a six unit radius, okay? But I, I wanted to find the area and the perimeter, and I only have the one piece of information, that it is a six sided. So the first thing I'm gonna do is realize what is the central angle? Well, each one of these angles are the same, and they share the 360 degrees of the circle that they are inside of. So we know that each one of them are going to be one-fifth of the circle, so 72 degrees. If I took this triangle, pulled it out, and stuck it here, I would have a 72 degree angle with six and six. But if I took half of that, right, for this one, I split it in half, and made another triangle, I would have a 36 degree angle here, I would have uh, an unknown value that I really need to find, right? And I would have six as my radius. At this point, I can employ a little bit of trig. In order to do so, I'm gonna look at this and realize that the x and the 36 are opposite to each other, and I have an hypotenuse. So the trig function that works with opposite and hypotenuse is the sine. The sine of 36 equals x over six. If I multiply six by both sides, I'll end up with six sine 36, and I get 3.527. That is the length of x. Well, I, that's great, that's gonna help me, but I, in order to find area, I gotta have a height too. Well, the height is the apothem in this situation. So in order to find the apothem, I'm going to use the same information, but use the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which is the cosine. So six cosine of 36, right, adjacent over hypotenuse, so it would be cosine uh, 36 equals x, or y in this case, uh, over uh, 6. Then I, I solve for that, I'll say the apothem therefore is 6 cosine 36, and the apothem is 4.854. That's the length from here. So now I have the base and I have a height. Well, with a base and a height, I can find area. 1 half base times height is area. So I plug the base in, and I get the area is 8.560. That's the area of this one little triangle. Well, let's put them back in here. I had one is half of this one, and this is one fifth of that, which means that there are, if I were to put this back in here, and I've got two in this one, two in this one, two here, two here, and two here. So I have 10 of these small triangles. So I'm gonna look at that and realize that the one small triangle is 8.560. If I've got 10 of those, right? There's two in this one, two in here, two in here, two in here, two in here. Two in here. I'm going to multiply by 10, and I end up with 85.6. That is the area of the regular uh, uh, polygon that is in there. Once I'm done with that, I, I go back and I, I read this and realize they're looking for the perimeter as well. Well, if I know what x is, which we solve for, right, we can say that, that there are how many of these x's all the way around? Well, once again, there's two on this line, two on this line, two on this line, two on this line, two on this one. Two times five is 10, so I have 10 of those, and the length of 3.527 uh, times 10 is 35.27. These are very simple to work with. They are going to require you to use a little bit of logic as you get through them and uh, pay attention to the details on how many triangles that regular uh, polygon has. Now, let's go ahead and look at uh, example 73.2. Find the area uh, if the perimeter of a regular eight-sided polygon is 48. Okay, so now we're going to realize that it's 48 uh, is the perimeter. Well, eight sides, so 48 divided by eight, that gives me six, so I have each one of them have a base of six. I realize that it is a eight-sided, so eight goes into 360 
45 times. So here's my one little piece. I didn't even have to draw the whole uh, uh, polygon, the inside of polygon. I don't need to do all that to realize what I'm doing here. I, I have a triangle that I need to find the area of, and I have this information. If I split this in half, I'm left with this triangle, right? Half of six is three. Half of 45 is 22 and a half. Now I have something I can find an apothem on. The apothem is going to be, once again, the height. So I go back to my trig knowledge and realize that which is three and corresponding to 22.5. Well, that's the opposite. And I'm looking for the adjacent. So I'm gonna use the tangent, opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 22.5 equals three over A. Stop just a moment and watch this. Because this is the, the, in the years that I've been teaching this, this right here, it catches more people than probably anything else I can think of offhand. And that is that when they're doing this, they say, oh, I need to get A by itself, so I'm gonna divide both sides by three. No, you just found one over A. In order to get A by itself, I multiply A by both sides, okay? And then I divide both sides by the tangent of 22.5. That gives me A equals three over tangent of 225. If you did this wrong, you'd end up with tangent of 225 over three is equal to A, but it's not. That's equal to one over A. And I've seen some students who do it that way, and that's fine if you don't flip both sides. But the key here is realizing A is my variable. It's in the denominator. I can't cancel the numerator and have it be equal to A. I cancel the numerator and I'm left with one over A. So I multiply A by both sides, giving me A tangent of 22.5. Then I want to get rid of the tangent of 22.5, so I divided both sides by that, and that, gave me, that left me A alone is equal to three over tangent of 22.5. When I hit the calculator with that, I end up with 7.24. That's the apothem. That's this length here. Well, if I know the apothem and I know the base, I can find out the area. One half base times height, right? Or one half base times the apothem. So three, times one half, times 7.24, that gives me an area of 10.86. That's the area of the small one. Well, how many of these small triangles? Well, if I had eight large triangles, right, that gave me 16 small triangles, and I know that each small triangle's area is 10.86, so I'm gonna multiply 16 times 10.86 and get 173.76, is the area of my polygon. So a little bit of a, a, a tongue twister as you go through this, and it's very easy to make some, some common mistakes. However, if you'll take the time to sketch out what you're doing, and realize how many there are, realize that that number is going to tell you the central angle, and half the central angle will be each of the small triangles piece. So you have to kind of uh, uh, go through this methodically, but you'll find that finding the areas of regular polygons when you know a, a radius or you know a perimeter is pretty simple to do.